Hi, everyone, and welcome to this Unlock Genius call on radical self-leadership or self-responsibility. But self-responsibility sounds heavier and kind of more just, oh, I have to take more responsibility, whereas leadership sounds more like we're going forward and we are kind of meeting, I guess, the future. And I feel that with where we are right now in the astrology, there is just like no waiting around. We have all the planets that are direct. And some of you, Agron, for example, was here in Florida in September. And I realized last night, as I was looking at Mars, Mars was retrograde for months. It's in the same key and the same line as the first week of September, which means that if we look here in Gemini, where it is now, it went back into 35, into 45, I think even 12, and then now it's forward again. And it's at the same place. So I realized that this week there are things that were there after the summer in the beginning of September that can have come up. Things that have even either been like kind of hidden or been processing or been integrating and they're coming up to the surface. And for me, I feel a lot of those uh, themes that came up in the in, in, in the ceremony that had to do with Shakti, that had to do with like the feminine kind of uh, aliveness and part of the patriarchy and a lot of these things which are part of my life but they became like so super clear in that period and then it's been a little bit calmer and now it's coming back again so I'm proposing something for 2027 for 2023 as we're coming into this energy where you can see looking at all these planets nothing is retrograde you know the nodes are the nodes they can be retrograde but no none of the planets are retrograde everything is moving forward until april i think it's the 20th of april or something like that so we have a few months to stage this whole year and to take the leaps and we have a lot of aspects and if you guys are following the daily horoscope you're going to see i was speaking about this morning mars was actually together with the moon the moon is so fast so they were together and they are making a trine to the sun so the sun is illuminating all these things that can have to do with hunger, that can have to do with domination, that can have to do with vanity, that can have to do with indifference. All these things are coming up in different ways in for each one of us, of course. Uh, and, and we also have later this week, a full moon in Leo, your self-expression. And on the other side, we have the sun in Aquarius. So it's like, how are we going forward in the Aquarian age? And there also, I think we are gonna have Venus and Mars square each other as well here soon and then it's also like okay are we what's the inner union do we have come do we have embodiment and awareness going hand in hand or is your inner masculine your awareness not happy with your inner feminine oppressing her or is she, is she too needy like what's happening on the inside between the masculine and the feminine because that's what doesn't allow us to be in sovereignty uh, and so for the purpose of the work that some of you have done <laughs> this year with us you know it's the work of hope and here we have the Merkava. We have the masculine penetration, the evolution of awareness, and we also have the process of embodiment. And it's not just one awareness, like one kind of thing. Like it's this is layers and layers and layers. This is a Merkava. So there is always more layers of deeper embodiment and more layers of, uh, of evolution of consciousness. So for me, I love this. It's like it's a space that we're inhabiting where there is this continuous spiral that allows us deeper embodiment and more expanded awareness. And it's actually grounding that awareness in the body because what does it matter if we like, you know, like I don't think it's so, I'm bored by gurus that don't walk their talk. I'm, that's the, there's nothing I'm more bored about <laughs> or people that explore awareness from a place of not even being in the body. Um, so yeah, we just spoke about Mars and Venus, you know, like we are sandwiched here in between. This is our body. And these, these two forces, the, the polarities between yin and yang, masculine and feminine, it's, that's what a lot is about on the earth. That's a lot of the gravity. How peaceful is it here? It depends on the relationship between Venus and Mars. So this is what I'm proposing for self-leadership. Uh, and it's a little bit harsh maybe but I actually I actually like it so everything that comes to us is for us all rejection is self-rejection all betrayal is self-betrayal 
The process is forgiveness of ourselves. It's humbleness in front of life and creation. It is never anyone else's fault. We are 100% responsible for our experiences. Everything that happened in childhood was the imprinting for the soul to remember why it's here uh, and what it came to heal for the lineage and collective. Whatever situation we keep repeating has to do with us and not with the other. We're just, we're just using them to become more clear and break out of any limitation. This is not the harsh reality. This is the fertile soil for empowerment and for rising like a phoenix from the ashes of the shadows and victim patterns humanity has been perpetuating. So for me, there is one little exercise I want us to do later on. It's like a seven minute thing. But right now, I just feel like I want to have a conversation around this because I had people, I used part of this in my daily horoscope and there are people like, oh, so you mean that child abuse and satanic, I don't know, this and that, you mean that that's fair? You mean, I understand our reincarnation, but do you mean that that's the responsibility of the child? And yeah, I can see that we can go down that route in our conversation. I can also see that that kind of takes away part of that possible leadership that we can step into and of the responsibility as well. So because we're so few, I just feel like it's an interesting place to feel into. What is it? And, you know, inside of you right now, if you just, I mean, let's just do one minute exercise. <sighs> Just sigh out whatever energy I, I poked on you or I provoked on you or whatever boredness you felt by me speaking fast. Just take a few breaths and sigh a few times so you come back in your own energy. <sighs> One more sigh. And then from this place, paste the word awareness. So use all, all of you and taste the word awareness. Like where does it live in you? How connected are you to it? How expansive is it? Awareness. And Check in on a scale from one to 10. How connected or how committed, how connected and committed are you to awareness? Expanding awareness from one to 10. Or maybe you see it in some other way. If blue is kind of cold, not connected. Red is like super connected. You see how, how you see that kind of scale of your commitment to awareness. And just take note of that. And then we have another word. So now you taste the word embodiment. Embodiment. Where does it live? How does it feel? And how connected and how committed are you to embodiment? And again, a scale or a color scheme of, of you being able to see on a range. How connected, how committed to embodiment? And maybe you just check yourself like the number or the color when it comes to those two, are they more or less the same or are you more committed to either awareness or embodiment? When you put them next to each other, like does it feel like they go together or does it feel like they're completely on different pages? What happens as you're bringing in embodiment and awareness at the same time? What do you see in front of you? What do you feel and recognize in your body? maybe put them a little bit closer in your awareness, like almost like two spheres becoming like a Venn diagram or a Vesica Pisces. Like what happens when you're will, like with your will kind of putting them almost inside 
overlapping. How does that feel? I feel expansive. Does it feel like you can't breathe? <laughs> How does it feel? Allowing them in the same room, in the same container, the same conversation, in the same body, in the same understanding. So maybe in the shares, you kind of want to tell us, you know, what's your what's your commitment to embodiment? What's was it for it to awareness? How connected is it? And then from there, we just can flow free. Who wants to start? Yeah, Nicole. I'm going to preface mine with I think my in. Last week, Jenny was aware of this, and I think Larissa was in the call as well that I had last week, that I realised how dysregulated I was in a somatic session. So I'm going to preface this response to the fact that I'm understanding how dysregulated I am as a baseline. So there's a lot of nervous energy in me at the moment, generally, because of what's coming. So in saying that, I was really surprised at my connections. So for awareness on its own, I got an eight. And the color was a really deep purple and my entire body tingled. There wasn't any part of my body that wasn't tingling at all. And then when we switched it to embodiment, I was surprised it was as high as a six because it's something that I've really struggled with for my entire life. So I was expecting it to be like a two or even a zero or something. So I was really pleased that it was a six and the color was yellow, which was interesting. And then when you were asking us to merge it, I couldn't do them with the Venn diagram type idea, but I came up with the phrase embodied awareness together as a phrase. And as I felt that, where you put your hand over your diaphragm area, that area, there was like a really small dot of light sitting there that wanted to get bigger, but I was also catching my breath. So it's like, as I said, with the context of my dysregulated state, there's obviously my embodied awareness is really working hard at trying to really lock in and anchor strongly given that my um embodiment on its own was as high as a six so they were my responses wow. which i was really happy with <laughs> I like it. it's a whole journey i love it two minutes and it took you on that wow <laughs> thank you who else Well, I can speak a little bit about following on to, uh, I, I am sorry, I forget the name, Nicole. Yes, Nicole was speaking about this baseline dysregulation, which is something that I have been acutely aware of and um, gradually noticing changes in. And when it comes to the awareness centers mental and emotional and splenic is kind of how I see them and how I hear them from other people um when I tuned in to I'm sorry about the dog barking um the awareness and the embodiment have been merging all I saw was purple and all I got was 10. <laughs> so that's, uh, and I was thinking earlier today about how I'm going to kill the dog. Um, <laughs> uh, it used to be, oh, oh, I knew what it was. I was walking with my father through the hospital and because he was having a procedure and he was telling me about how to get here and there and everywhere. And I realized, and I, I've been telling him this for a year now, since I fell down the stairs and don't remember anything with my head anymore, that now I remember everything through my body. I walk everywhere. And now I know things because I remember them from walking there. And I can't remember them only from hearing anything anymore which is such a huge change for a person who used to be almost entirely mental. Now it all comes through the sensations that I feel in my body knowing. So this is amazing to me. So there's that. Thank you. 
thanks for listening that is so cool and you both had purple with kind of the higher the higher number so that's also something that that was cool <laughs> thank you and yeah we didn't hear the dog really it was like faded out by your mi microphone on zoom so you were you were more uh yeah more kind of aggravated than we were <laughs> who wants to go next Can I just make a point on what Deborah just said out of curiosity to sort of a segue? That memory walking thing, there's a whole um, sphere of knowledge about that. There were books written about exactly that. And it's what a lot of the Indigenous and First Nations cultures of the planet have done. And it's why they were always oral traditions, is because they walked the knowledge and they walked their culture and they walked everything. So their memory was tied to place and space and walking. So what Deborah is doing is actually connecting into a really, really old, powerful way of holding memory. And it's a lot firmer than our headspace intellectuals. I can look up the book if you want, if anyone's curious, but just as you were talking that, that's immediately what came to mind. I feel that. I feel that the truth of what you're saying. It's, yeah, thank you. I'm aware of the history and I feel it. So thank you. Oh, when I was listening to your uh, attunement or uh, meditation, Bella, I was thinking that uh, at this point I was trying to anchor my embodiment or what I have embodied more than seek to embody more maybe stabilize the, the embodiment. And then when I was thinking of awareness, uh, I was feeling that I would just want to continue listening. And uh, that's where I found my awareness. It's just, and uh, earlier this morning, I, I, I got a, a remembering finally. I'd been sitting in a lot of, uh, unease and melancholy for a while uh, intentionally and uh, I, was, I was really grateful to finally hear a little bit of uh, remembering and I remembered that a year and a half ago or maybe a little more my my initial intent was to understand um so really my 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 gene key adventure if i had to put a word around my gene key and human design adventure it's, it's really all been about listening and and that's awareness for me so i i definitely scale that i'm very, very dedicated to growing more awareness, but that's a very line three thing for me. I just, that's what I like doing. I like going on these adventures and growing awareness. And I want to, I want to keep doing that uh, because I feel like I've gained a lot of understanding for, you know, for where I'm in denial. Yeah, and I just feel like if I can really take ownership of, of what I can do about where it is that I'm ignorant about and embody uh, maybe a, a better way of being, once I've grown in that awareness, then I can be a better uh, masculine presence, I can be a better father, I can be a better husband i can be a, a, a better community leader so definitely more more on the awareness on the awareness side the embodiment i'm still very dedicated to the embodiment but um i just don't want to like let what i've embodied slip i want to 
want to concentrate on anchoring that embodiment first. So that's really where my mind has gone. And uh, yeah, today I was just grateful that uh, I was lost a little bit before that and I didn't really know where I was going to go. And then all of a sudden it just dropped in. I was like, oh, I just have to sit calmly and listen to everyone and uh, and gain more awareness. So thanks for listening. Thank you, Terry. There's just a part of me that felt a little bit sad about the future because I can feel you now and I can feel you ground in this now. And I know like the journey you've been on. And I just, I mean, I know that you are constantly in mutation and that you're probably happy with your where you are right now in presence. And at the same time, I often hear you kind of aim further so that it almost feels like you're not in, you're not feeling and you're enough now Um, and there's just something beautiful in the constant mutation of including more but not because we have to become more just because that's part of the nature of life or something something like that came up for me as I was listening no if I look at myself like from one year to the next in my entire life there is not one moment where I am the same so it's really is uh, just who I am, I guess. And uh, um, yeah, well, it's part of the adventure too. But I can, like, I can get very mel- melancholic and just say, fuck it, you know, and, and let a lot of embodiment go too. So I, I'm being mindful to, you know, especially in the last couple of days, I was really, again, I, I was so grateful today, this morning that something came in because I was just kind of feeling a little bit like the sidewaysness of like the, the fuck it coming in a little bit, but I was, uh, it was nice. It was nice to have finally a little bit of direction, a little bit of remembrance. So thank you. Thank, thank you for you. listening. And for those of you that were in hold, we were speaking, remember about the seventh gene key came in kind of strong about leadership or resistance to stepping up to leadership or conflicts around leadership. So basically on the fifth, so on Sunday, we're going to have a full moon that is going to be in 7.4. So that's for all of us. And then the sun, of course, is going to be in 13. Aquarius 13, Leo is the seven. And that's the cross of the Sphinx. So four, six cross of the Sphinx is the next full moon, which has completely to do with that, you know, forward direction of humanity, seven connected to 31. How can we feel the direction from the true self out into the world? How can we speak that? How can we guide that? So it's a powerful full moon where I feel this this week, a lot of things have to move, have to fall apart, have to come together, like the purple of the embodiment and the awareness. And then we're moving on with that inner guidance and that inner guidance comes from the heart which is the most important thing with the seven and terry knowing that's also your vocation and a fifth line so it's like you know yeah the, the continuous heart whether the heart is melancholic or the heart is powerful the heart like that's so much of that seven energy of the inner guidance of the heart mm, yeah well i've been able to let go of a lot of like my my fifth line energy i feel and i want to speak a little bit to that uh, I feel like my my embodiment wants to be more and more uh, concentrated on uh, on my I guess just my personal karma. You know, uh, I felt like earlier on in the last year, it was like everything was about transpersonal and the transpersonal karma, and now I've really felt like I've shifted. And maybe perhaps burnt up a lot of that. And I'm finally a little bit free from it. And now I'm looking at more my 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 personal karma. So that's that's a way that my fifth line has shifted a little bit, where I, I feel like I've been able to really cleanse it or make it less uh, clingy and less really attached to all these complicated like 
transpersonal things. And now I'm just really trying to take ownership of my own thing. So felt like saying that. Thank you. Yeah, I wrote in the chat, inner guidance is what the seven is for me. And then that becomes outer guidance. And I guess that's why with this call today, I said the topic is radical self-leadership. Because before we can lead anything else, we need to at least be able to lead ourselves on the inside, which is also why before your awareness and your embodiment are friends with each other or your inner masculine and your inner feminine, it's there's very it's very slight chance that you're going to experience union, sacred union outside of yourself. It's definitely like this whole thing that we are speaking about today for me can only seed and grow on the inside first and continue to seed and grow in those continuous layers. So I'm talking a lot. Uh, Larissa, do you have peace enough around you? No kids running around? <laughs> oh, no, they're all here. <laughs> um, yeah, so with the exercise, the awareness, I feel, jumps between like 50% sometimes, and then sometimes it's like 80%. Um, I struggle with feeling like I short in my system, so it's kind of that dysregulation um, thing that Nicole was kind of talking about, but this is like the first call that I've been in a group setting, and I don't feel any anxiety at all, which is not normal. Normally I feel some level of angst, but, um, I did a group call earlier with some ladies and I fell apart. I like completely dismantled. And it basically was like, I can't trust my friends and I can't trust the groups that I'm a part of. And so it makes sense why I would be anxious in a group setting every single time I'd come in, I'd be okay. I'm uncomfortable, but I'm going to sit here with it. So, um, I feel like that's a good sign. Like the medicine might have, you know, taken into effect. Um, the the embodiment part, uh, it did trigger hunger in me. That that's what I felt. I do have thirty five point three in my chirons in Gemini, um, and then I do have the seven point five in my Design Mercury as well. Um, so I'm kind of embodying the uh, the Daredevil right now. And I'm kind of just, I'm just like doing like things that in my mind, I'm like, that's probably a stupid thing to do, but I'm going to go do it anyways. Um, so, but I had some questions and it was like, cause I'm like, well, I'm hungry. Okay. Well, what am I deficient in? Why am I? So it's like, what am I missing or what am I not aware of? So I guess the, the embodiment, I can feel it triggering the awareness or things that I could ask myself at least in, in this capacity. So um, the the color purple is definitely what I was envisioning as well. Um, and I noticed a lot of activity in my eyes. Like, I, like when my eyes were closed, like I felt them like shifting back and forth, like moving out, moving back in, moving up and down. Like, so that's kind of where a lot of the activity took place was in my, my uh, eye region. So, um, yeah, I think that's all. And this is so cool because I think this is one of the first times I don't feel pressure, like internal pressure when you speak. Like I usually feel some kind of internal pressure. So, you know, sometimes I want to shake you, sometimes I want to strangle you, sometimes I want to hug you. But like now I'm just, I don't need to, like it feels like I don't, I don't need to like do anything. I'm just hearing you because also, it, it, like you say, if you're not feeling anxious, you're kind of just coming in with you and then there's nothing to do more than being with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's really bizarre. I don't, I like literally I've been with you guys since March of this last year and I, every single call I've had anxiety and I've been on it, like, pretty much every single call. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to come. I'm exhausted from earlier, but I'm going to come. And now I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> I don't feel anxious. It's so weird. It's so weird. It feels weird because it's, it's not, it's not my baseline. Normally I'm completely dysregulated. <laughs> so it's, it's a little exciting. I'm, I'm excited. 
I can go next, I guess. So for awareness, I felt it inside in my heart and the color was red. And the word that I got was perception. And then for embodiment, it was, I felt it in my stomach and uh, green. Oh, the, the, the number for awareness was 10. And then for embodiment, so it was in the stomach, green, and then uh, eight. And the word I got was expression. And then when they came together, I saw like a Merkaba and it was like whole. And um, that's it. And how is it connected to like your experience, your life right now? Or the, like, how is it, what is it connected to? Like, do you see like a bigger picture of what came up for you? Or is there anything, anything that feels connected that you want to bring in? Uh, I didn't get that far. Do you want to go that far right now, live? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. That's fine. <laughs> Consent is fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then I will have control, so that's not good. <laughs> I don't know. I For me, with the seven, I just know that whatever is going to happen this year in 2027, we're not going to be in control. So it's better to like start now as... The coconuts are falling in our heads, but not all the time. <laughs> I mean, 2027, I don't even think it's going to be coconuts. It's going to be things we don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, thinking on our feet in my whole entire education, that was the only class I really loved. It was a brain researcher, a woman in her 50s at UCLA. And the, the class was called Thinking on Your Feet. And it was just so amazing. What's about leadership or strategy leadership for in my MBA? And it was just, yeah. And it, it really kind of drove that point at the end of the day. You know, like that's that's true intelligence to be able to just act, think on your feet, you know, as we are meeting, facing things that we haven't that we haven't fa faced before. I guess saying to still also like what's the difference between being what is it they say a manager and a leader or like a boss and leader or something like that. It's responsibility. Yeah, basically. So where is the responsibility with the boss or the leader? Well, it all falls back to the boss because he's. He's the, last, he's the one in charge. It's all lays or comes down to him. So it all comes back to him, whether whatever the manager is in place do, because it's a representation of him and he put them in that place. So he's responsible at the end. It all comes back to him or her. And what about the relationship with the leader and the boss? What do you mean? Well, what's the what's the leap or the jump from being a boss to being a leader, or what's the difference, or what's the, the yeah, like what's the geometry between them? So ownership, risk, integrity. Where, where, what have you invested? Where are you invested? How 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 are you all in, or where where are you at? That's how I perceive it. So is the leader more in, or the boss more in? The boss is more in because he invested. Yeah, he's responsible for everything. And what about the leader? Well, the leader, the leader is like on the front line. So yeah, I mean, he's responsible. He's going to be compensated if we're talking on a business aspect. But again, it falls back on the boss, right? I mean, there's no, I don't have a right and a wrong answer, but it's, you know, exploring the difference I mean, exploring what it is to be a leader. I feel that's part of the seven, the moon, like what we're speaking about walking into the future. Not, it's not only about ownership. It's like so much. Well, responsibility and risk. That's what comes to mind for me is responsibility. But responsibility and, responsibility and risk coming to financial matters or responsibility and risk 
in in relationship to what or you see you know because it seems like when we're speaking about responsibility and like investment is money but when it comes to the leader is the leader really about money the boss is probably about money but is is the leader about money well the leader is about implementing the system processes and procedures that were set in place hopefully by the boss so yeah well there are two hands i i i want to hear jenny as well but let's nicole and terry if you have things that are kind of tying into the leader boss and like to whatever we were please come in now yeah and i'm i'm hearing what's oh. dropping in for me is oh is someone else oh someone else is talking yeah nicole was not... speaking but she was made, muted <laughs> oh here, Nicole, let it's me, right. let, right, let, me, you let, me let you go, go first. No, no, it's okay. I yield to you. You, you started talking first. <laughs> for those that don't know, Thierry and I have done a course together. So we're used to each other. <laughs> and I forgot I was muted. Um, and I'm, I apologize. Is it, Agu is it Agron? I don't know how to say your, uh, it's Agron. No, just checking. I got the emphasis. The way he was speaking, my energy, I was getting quite clenched in my solar plexus with what he was talking about. But for me, I think it was because it felt very business, very organisational, very work oriented. And for me, the difference in boss and leader, you can be a leader and not be in work. You can be a leader just in any part of your being and you don't need to have any sort of the way the words were coming through. It felt very financial, very checks and balances, profit and loss, all that type of system. Whereas leader to me is someone that can guide others by just the way they do things. You don't need to be the boss to be a leader. You don't need to be um, the head of a project or a teacher in a classroom. You can have children in a classroom that can lead the teacher just as well as a teacher if they've got skills. And I think um, Thierry sort of said integrity was one of the words he burst out. To me, that is what it is. It's that having that alignment in yourself and being able to guide people forward is leadership. And a really good example of that is if you just look into the pandemic years of the varying world leaders who could be seen as bosses of their countries, but they are meant to be the leaders and who did well and who didn't in doing that because they were thinking of greater than the whole. They, they were thinking of the whole, sorry, not just themselves. They could encompass everything. And you can see that in parents, you can see that all over society. It's not just a very specific example of a business. And in a business organisation, you can have terrible bosses who are terrible leaders and they've got control of the profit and loss and the, they're, they're looking at, say, a numbers. But you can also have really good leaders that aren't bosses in an organisation that are the ones that sort of keep the personnel going, the humanity side of it which I think is maybe what Bella was talking about with the transition humanity is doing with the crosses. And just as an aside, I don't have the seven or the 31. <laughs> um, that's a bit of a blank spot up there for me. But, and I've got an open throat. So I don't know if that's also partly where my literal body, like Larissa was talking about, that buzzy nervousness, that really kicks in when I talk like this now. So that's what I had to say. You've got the floor, Thierry. <laughs> It was very clear though, Nicole. I feel like you kind of took up the space and you were able to convey it in a very clear way. So thank you for putting like words on it and all these examples that actually painted the picture. It was very clear and you know, your your open throat was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was feeling into uh, gate uh, 18. And also it's programming partner of 17. And uh, the 17 is um, being aware of both sides of the coin. And uh, for me in, in my business and uh, leadership at work uh, knowledge or experience, <clears throat> it's, been, it's been about uh, safety versus production because of course in construction, it's a lot about safety because it's very dangerous. And uh, being, you know, the leaders that uh, the construction workers could 
follow had an integrity where they didn't put all of the, they were able to see both sides of the production and the safety and be in an integrity. I don't know. I don't even know if uh, I need to say anything else, but there's something there. And I feel like integrity is also, I, I kept on talking about self accountability for the last two years, you know, all self, but really self accountability is integrity, which actually just dropped in a couple of weeks ago, which is, I was, I was laughing at myself. I says, Oh my goodness. I've been using the wrong word all this time. So I felt quite silly, but yeah, integrity is uh, dropped in uh, for me very, very strong recently. And I feel like, you know, those are the people that people want to follow the people with deep integrity and the ability to see both sides of the story, because, you know, the employee and the employer are, they don't have the same priorities. And then a leader is able to find the middle ground and the compromise that each side can live with so that you can go forward together and accomplish what it is that you wanna that you wanna do. And there's a lot of subtleties to that. And not a lot of people, it's it's, it's a weird, yeah, it's it's a complex little dilemma that we live in anyways now i'm just kind of wondering thanks for listening thank you i just want to keep or get kilo and jennifer up to speed so basically what we did today is that we spoke about radical responsibility we could say that everything that happens to us is for us and not for anybody else and kind of using that as a roadmap or as a way of advancing into 2023 where everything is going forward in the planet for the next few months and also as we know for 2027 there are going to be more things that are unexpected to happen so then as we're taking full responsibility as we're coming into integrity as we're coming into our self-leadership that's how we actually can say yes and face everything that comes to us and we did a very very short exercise it was like two minutes where we tuned into where awareness lives in us and where embodiment lives in us like separately and then how they look together to kind of look at that geometry of awareness inhabiting us embodiment inhabiting us and how they are co co-creating or not co-creating um so i would like you jenny to come in uh because you haven't spoken and then i think we're going to go to that little exercise that i said after that possibly and then we'll come back but yeah i would love you to come in because you haven't spoken Thank you. Um, yeah, the first thing that happened to me was um, like with I felt pressure. I felt pressure to to kind of give something, and then that pressure kind of like made me want to pop. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do this, and I just want to get out of the room. Like, you know, I don't, I don't like pressure. Uh, and I think that's the line, the line three. Um, but then I, you know, like, okay, relax into it. I got fifty fifty on both of the embodiment and the awareness. Um, and that's it really. Um, but I was still feeling that like external pressure that was kind of affecting me. Um, but today, what's alive for me was um I've been I've been attending like a local cafe that's called Complete Kindness. And it's run by a, a woman, you know, and she's she's kind of trying to she's trying to implement new systems like um in the way that she's supporting healers. And it, it was today was the day that I was giving her a session. She asked for a gene key session. So I was like, okay, I'm, this is, you know, I'm gonna do this today. Um, and then also the Kundalini instructor, I swapped a Kundalini session for, to, and I gave him a gene key session. Um, I really enjoyed the buildup, like the, the, the looking at the charts and discovering what archetype was speaking to me. You know, it was like Chiron came to speak to me um, and they both have 51 in the charts and Chiron was, you know, it's a, it's a 51 year um, transit around the chart and they both have, yeah, she has like 51 in her radiance and he has 51 in his heart. And I just learned that, you know, Chiron, part of his makeup is, is about initiatory, um, he's an initiatory archetype so he really fits with the archetype of 51. Um, so I, I, I can I, I really felt that archetype coming today. But then when I actually sat down in the sessions with them and I actually was talking about the gene keys and stuff, I just felt like 
I, like there was something in my head that was like, I don't know if, I don't even know if this is right. If I'm, is this right? Like, am I, am I doing the right thing? You know, like, um, um, but they seem to like the sessions, um, but I, it, it, I, I'm just, mm, I'm just not sure if that's what I'm meant to be doing. So I'm still, I'm still kind of cooking, I feel in the cauldron, like with all my creativity and, um, and I think it's just, a, I think it's still a case of timing for me. I, I'm, I can't, I can't pressure myself into it until I, until I, I get, I get most passionate and excited about things that I really, really know a lot about. You know, I've got a Capricorn stellium and Capricorn stelliums, they, they push for mastery, don't they? And, and unless I feel properly mastered on a subject, I, I really, I flounder, you know? So um, yeah, I, put, I think I put a lot of pressure on my own self in that, in that aspect. Um, but I really, yeah, I really like what they're doing. I really like, you know, they're, they're, she's, she's, they're alternative healers. It is very Chiron, the place. Um, so, but it isn't, but they, they are trying for this cashless society. Uh, they're trying to, they're trying that way. So it's, 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 yeah, let's see. Let's see. That's where I'm at. <laughs> Jenny, are you a five two? Uh, five one. A five one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt you so much in your five, what, in your five-ness. But today, in a way, because you have been in the expression on the fifth line, it was very, very much there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm still very apprehensive about speaking. And I, and I think I've just, I think I've just said it to myself then, like, you know, it's because I don't feel mastered on the, on the subjects, even though I've been studying them for so long, I still, Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't trust myself perhaps I don't trust my own leadership ability that that was going through the back of my head you know like am I saying the right things to these people I, I am very influential to these people you know there's a part of me I think it's the 48 it just wants to just wants to stay quiet you know it's just it's, mm, mm. yeah so I feel I feel very aware of how I can how I can influence people and that feels a lot of pressure yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of drove it home even more with the fifth line and the influence and the heretic and the cutting the throat and yeah, and that's the pressure sometimes in a ground too, you know, like being a five two, like I can feel that pressure too that's building up of of having that fifth line and like meeting the world with that fifth line constantly. Yeah. Okay, so let's do. Let's come. We'll come back. It's a seven minute thing, and. Partly why we're doing it is because in Unlock Your Design, of course, we're weaving everything. So what happened here? What happened right now? I changed my chart from tropical to sidereal. And remember how we were looking at where Mars was and we we're saying that it has been, it wasn't the same place in, in September. It went back and now it's there and things are starting to move. Well, when I changed to the sidereal chart, instead of this happening in Gemini, it actually happens in Taurus. And the archetype where Mars was in September and where Mars is coming back now is the second jinky, which is the orientation in the moment. We don't know anything, but we say yes to life as it comes. And um, we trust life as it comes, right? Which is, I know it's my life's work. I know, I do believe Jennifer, do you have, I, I know that some of you have the, have the one and the two. Larissa, you have the one and the two as well, right? So it's, it feels like it's, it's part of, it's a part of embodiment. It's the only key that has all the inlines. Um, and that's going to, that's going to take us on a little journey with the second gene key. And this is Richard. And I don't want us to sit in some, I, I think this is the mudra for the second jinky, the last thing I want you to do is to sit in the mudra of the second jinky. I really want you to listen to your awareness, listen to your embodiment. And if you have to stand up, you stand up. If you have to move, you have to move. If you have to lie down, you have to lie down. If you have whatever you need to do, it's seven minutes and he is going to speak about the second jinky. Uh, and whatever comes up, move to it. Breathe to it, make noise to it. It's seven minutes and then we come back and we see what's happened. But for me, it's the orientation in the moment of facing life as it comes, you know, trusting life as it comes. And that can be triggering, that can be liberating, that can be so many things. And there's no, again, right answer. So let's see. 
you need to try the sound, I think. And then the sound. Okay, see you on the other side seven minutes from now. Let me can some. Can you hear the music? Can you give me some thumbs up that you hear? Yeah. This is really where everything begins. 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 Every story we live, every myth, every movie, every novel, every soap opera, every drama in our lives, its fundamental theme is the longing for happiness, the longing to go home. We are home. Home is inside each one of us. We have to follow the river back towards its source. And as we do, we go through a transformation. We go through a healing. Nature returns our energies to us. We open to receive the currents of life and of love once again. When you feel lost, surrender to the feeling. Allow it to soak into you, to the bone. When you feel sad, dislocated, angry, hopeless, Afraid, excited, joyous, blissful, enthusiastic. Allow the feeling, whatever it is, to become utterly infused into your DNA. Receive it. Receive whatever comes your way. Receive and trust whatever comes your way. Trust everything. begin to open your heart up to life. You begin to allow life to resonate inside you at a higher frequency. You begin to love it. You let it crush you. You let it drown you. You let the water in. You let life in. Every experience is perfect. Slowly, you begin to relax. And the more we drop our agendas, our trying, our incessant concerns about our lives and others and those around us, and and the more we radiate the presence inside us, and then the magic occurs. No agendas, just love. To orient someone is to love them unconditionally. It's to be with them. It's to be yourself with them. It's to let them see your weakness as well as your strength. It's to be empty like water, and yet to be full. It's to be intuitive, it's to trust, it's to soften, to yield, to flow. People don't need help. People need love. They need to be reminded of what it feels like to be in the presence of love. It's as simple as that. So the more we surrender to everything, to every moment as perfect, the more oriented we become. Enlightenment, unity, is a physical phenomenon. 
It's not something outside the body. It requires the body. It celebrates the body. It completes the body. That's the key. Let that truth penetrate deeply into the cells of your body. Unity. Unity will not yield to understanding. It's our unbending essence. It's leafless. It's everlasting. It's unfeasibly beautiful. It's a home. Trust everything and go on trusting everything. Trust everyone. Trust your disappointments. Trust your sexuality. Trust your longing. Trust your boredom. Trust your sadness. Trust corruption. Trust conspiracy. Trust the world. Trust the whole shebang. Trust the shadow. It contains a gift. Fear is safe. That's the key sentence to this gift. Let it sink in deeply. Fear is safe. The universe and all its mysteries are hanging in the air before you every day and in every way. And the only way to find unity is to dissolve. You only have to melt into your own life to become one with it. And know that you can never be lost and you can never be wrong because you are life itself. All we have to do is melt into the dream that is life. Let your heart flow out into the sea of creation. Just surrender yourself to life. Become soft. Become like water. You know your home. This is really where everything begins. Okay, I would like, again, I'm tuning in, I would like in the chat one word for like your mind, like what's going on in your head, kind of the, like I often say the rider and then the body, which I often call the horse, like what's going on, what's the word for what's going on in the body, what's the word for the mind, or like the leader that's riding the horse. The awareness that's reading the, the, that's writing the embodiment. If you can just tune into that. What's going on in your mind? What's going on in your body? The so mind is relaxed for the uh, and the body is floating. Hmm. Money, money from Kilo. Nothing for Terry, blending from Nicole. Recognition and flowing and peace and safe. Anyone else? Anything else? Mine is neutral and the bottom lip is tingling. And then, yeah. Hmm. 
I realize, Laura, you have been here from the beginning, actually, but you haven't been on camera. Do you want to say anything? Do you want to reflect anything? Do you want to share anything? Maybe she, she dissolved in the unity of everything. Maybe she went home. Well, I thought people are going to be more triggered because it is kind of, okay, you're interested. It's kind of triggering in one way. You know, trust corruption, trust conspiracy, trust the whole shebang, right? So let's feel into it. Is there anything that wants to be shared in the space now? Does it want to be shared by you? If you don't say it, are you going to feel that little thing after that you didn't say it? feel into like maybe even close your eyes anything from your awareness anything from your body or from that body awareness or then body awareness Don't wait for me to give you the mic if something like we're kind of the hive, the hive body and the hive mind. So if there's anything that wants to be said, just let's trust that it's unmuted and spoken. Well, I was just delighted, delighted, delighted. It felt to me, but first I have to say, yesterday I was talking on the phone with Olivia and describing to her how in real life, all my life, I have loved walking physically upstream, looking for the beginning of the stream, the well, the spring. And in my journey, I have had the same sensation of just questing for that spring, that ultimate source of everything. And the this meditation spoke directly to this. And this whole way of water and the avatar thing has been just so I felt it so much. I have been feeling it so much. Well, there's just so much happening. Um, and now I forgot, but it's still happening. <laughs> Oh, I know. It was the totality of the 28, which is my life's purpose, which is like, yes, this is what I'm doing. Everything, 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 whatever it is, welcome it. Expand myself to accept and embrace all of the energies and just see what happens. Flow like water. So, yeah. That's me. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I feel you in the seven, the 31, the 28, the two, yeah. all these keys that are part of the <laughs> geometry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Terry and then Jennifer. Mm. Now, listening to that, I, uh, what came up for me was uh, the snake. And the, the role that the snake takes. And from one, one perspective, um, you know, it's really uh, quite the sacrifice that the snake has made to take on that role. 
even the spider sometimes. It's not always a very loved being, but it does does take on some very uh, difficult but needed responsibilities within. So I just wanted to speak out and word my gratefulness for, you know, for all of our sacrifices, everyone's sacrifice, because we all take on a sacrifice. And uh, so I just want to honor that and speak it out. And thanks for listening. It looks like Jennifer is trying to mute. Hello? Oh, there you are. We hear you now. We, we I'm don't on see my you. phone. Um, I totally forgot that this was happening today because I'm a go with the flow kind of lady. And it landed exactly what I was questioning on my on my way home from my drive, um, and then I was sitting in the car doing something, and then I went on my, my phone, and then I, oh, this is going on, so surprised that it, this was here, and then, um, hmm. <clears throat> the two, as many probably already know, is my vocation, and having it brought up in this way and it's oh is that all is that all I need to do that's what I have been doing and and that doubt of what I've been doing has dissolved so that is lovely um that trust in how I receive stuff that's just my that's that's me in the way that someone else receives stuff that's them and having hmm, the word isn't capacity um being able to communicate and listen and no allow isn't the right word either there's a word that is bridging the witnessing of someone else with myself just being who we are is lovely and the talk about water just reminded me of Bruce Lee and all his quotes about water so it was a delightful surprise for today so thank you thank you um, and Kilo I know you weren't here from the beginning and I know you didn't need to be here for the beginning because you're still tuning in to the movement. And I know you and I have spoken about radical self-leadership, self-responsibility. So just with that, I feel, you know, what's, what's the lie for you? Money. Money and this idea of this thing that was created so that we can trade our value and have that be representative of that. And when I feel into radical self leadership, or you know, when we had earlier talks about this, we had the word responsibility, and I like that word responsibility. I just I don't think it's as sexy, you know, right? So we went with radical self leadership. 
Um, but if we're going to come back to the root of that word, responsibility, I think that's a core quality of a leader to be able to do. And I think once we take initiative of our own lives, the inherent value we have is the value of choice. And we always have that. And I feel like we forget that. So we make it somebody else's choice or somebody else's decision. And in that way, we play victim to this thing we want and crave so much, freedom and liberation. But it does take initiative. And that initiative, once you begin to take it, that for me is radical self-leadership. And the with and without anybody else responding in any other way, I'm going to take my ability to respond and respond with, ah, I guess that's for everyone else to answer, right? And when I feel into the energetics of this container, and I don't know what was said about water, but I love water. I love it so much. That's the power to, I mean, we're beings made mostly of water. So definitely an aspect of creation there, right? Then you take like all of the destructive properties as well. And the fact that it holds vibration. And I think if all potential outcomes of experiencing life are held in every single cell and every single cell has a vibrational imprint that the water holds then the question for me is how do we consistently show up to speak to the water that is flowing within us and whatever the answer to that question is to just observe that without any judgment and if we don't feel aligned to that answer than to change the answer. And that's it. I, I'm not sure about the connection back to money or value. I feel that's where I got lost. The, the rest was clear. Is there any further connection? I mean, if we want to really loop it back, right, it's like this choice, this choice that we have. And I think um, one of the things that we have a regular choice in is how we spend our money. And I feel like that's easy for people to reflect on because I feel like a lot of people don't see it as the choice to spend money. They feel like they have to spend their money to survive. And so when you interlink all of those together, I think it's a really beautiful reflection for if we're in alignment with how we want to choose to be able to create our reality. Mm. 16 years, we are over the hour, peace and versatility. Thank you all for showing up today, for allowing me to poke a little bit, for leaning into the exercise, leaning into the field, co-creating. Uh, we don't have an agenda, but it feels like it was a lot of richness in our connection today. So thank you all for co-creating and for showing up. <laughs> Bye.